Photoshop CS3 significantly extends Adobe Photoshop's ability to stitch images together. This is most often used for things like panoramic photography. Now, you may be wondering, what does a panoramic photo have to do with video production? A lot, in fact. I find that panoramic photos of my locations or sets are very useful if I have to do a location pickup or for backdrops for virtual sets. By harnessing the power of keying and a great backdrop, you can cut down on the cost of your video production. Let's see how. Creating a panoramic or backdrop image inside of Adobe Photoshop CS3 has gotten incredibly easy. You can now take multiple images that you've shot and combine them to create a new widescreen image. I've included a folder full of images that were shot while down in Acapulco. These images were taken without a tripod and I simply rotated my body to shoot the photos. You'll see here I have six images and I made sure that there was some overlap with those images. It's important that as you turn your body Photoshop has at least a 20% overlap so it could determine how it could take this image and overlap it with this image to create a seamless blend between the two photos. Let's go ahead and select these images here and I can even right from bridge here choose to merge these together. Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. This brings those six images into the Photo Merge command. You could choose to use files or a specific folder. Now with that said, you have lots of options for layout. Some of you would be tempted to do the interactive layout. I encourage you to not go there unless Photoshop fails. You can simply choose Auto and it will compensate for perspective as well as image bending and reposition the photos. This will allow you to take a handheld panoramic image. Also be sure to choose to blend those images together. When satisfied, click OK. Photoshop will take over and open up every single image and merge it into one new document. It will also automatically align those layers and blend their edges together. This is very useful as it can help hide exposure problems as you move from one image to the next. What Photoshop is doing now is attempting to align those layers automatically. It's analyzing the contents of the layer and attempting to hide the seams. Once the images are opened into the single document, it will then attempt to blend the images. And at that point, we have a very effective panoramic image. Notice that Photoshop has compensated for my turning, as well as preserved an even horizon line. All that's left to do now is to crop the image to get rid of the borders. We can go ahead here and crop. And you may need to use the clone tools to fill in space a little bit. I'll go ahead here and just crop down and click apply. And when satisfied, I can flatten the image. Layer flatten image. Feel free to use your clone stamp tool, S for stamp, and you could sample and clone in some of that sky. And that works very well. You also may choose to select the sky, select color range, and pick that sky. There we go and you could run a slight blur on it if you needed to or use the average filter. I'll just do a very gentle Gaussian blur there we go and click OK. And what I've done is further refine the sky so it's nice and even. The fact that Photoshop can take several images and stitch them together into a giant canvas is incredibly useful for those of you creating backdrops or virtual sets. Be sure to take a look at File, Automate, photo merge, as well as get your digital camera out and start playing.